Really excited to tell you, um, we have every now and then these comedy fundraisers in Burbank at Flappers. Uh, they've been a lot of fun. We've had some really great comics there, and one of them we all particularly loved has agreed to come back today to do a short performance, a little bit more comedy, which everyone enjoys. So I would like to welcome, um, she's been seen on Last Comic Standing, NBC, ABC, Lifetime. Please welcome to the stage, Sheila Ratner. <laughs> so much. Oh, I guess you didn't realize the hunger for connection would have to do with the microphone this morning. Um, thank you for putting up the international sign for the icebreaker is over, a wolf putting his snout into another wolf's mouth. I recall that from my days of foreign travel. Um, I drove by the Scientology Center on the way here and thought, God, there's one mistake I didn't make. Just love those good days in LA. It's always a positive spin. We're all running and skipping and eating guacamole. And kid went by me on a skateboard the other day. He said, what day is it? I was like, I don't know, Thursday? But check at the corner. It's like Benjamin Button. We're all just getting younger. I like it. Uh, my name's Sheila Ratner, but my mother liked Irish playwrights and practical jokes, so she spelled it S-H-E-L-A-G-H. -H. So when I went to jury duty in Manhattan and they called Schlug Ratner, <laughs> I had no choice but to rise and be counted. It's an awfully long walk when the name or noise Schlug is made. I was often called Schlug as a child and uh, moved every two years and I had a lazy eye. So if you're wondering how to make a stand-up comic, why those are the ingredients right there. That's exactly how you do that. I was thinking the other day what I would do if I did, I love comedy so much. What would I do if I didn't do comedy? What would my ideal job be? I'd like a job where I don't have to get too dressed up, time to work out every day, meet my basic needs. I want to go to prison. I want to be incarcerated. I just, doesn't it sound simpler, ladies? Same orange jumpsuit every morning. No snacking between ma meals because you're tucked away in that cell. Meet interesting people who've killed other people. I don't know, be safe in there. It's sort of getting crazy in the world, isn't it? The White House might become a Trump casino. What is happening? What is happening? I think no one is sticking to their assigned tasks. A bunch of people want Oprah to be a senator. Great talk show host, she's not a senator. Lincoln is not a vampire hunter, you guys. <laughs> I went out to a Dodger game, you know, th who threw out the first pitch, Hello Kitty. What is happening? What is happening? I'll tell you what happened a while ago. They invited the cast of Scandal to the White House press dinner, and that is when the confusion began. <laughs> Numerous people wanted to vote for Olivia Pope. That's not Olivia Pope, that's Kerry Washington. All right, then I'll vote for Kerry Washington. No, no, we blurred the lines between entertainment and politics, you guys. That's all there is to it. There's, there's too, much, too much power given to the reality stars. You know there's gonna be a second NBA draft just for the Kardashians to pick their next husbands? Did you guys know that? I was watching House of Cards the other night and it's shot in this really somber way and Robert Wright is dressed to the nines and it's serious cutthroat politics. What I'm saying is our television shows are taking our politics more seriously than we are. This is what I'm saying to you. Something has gone terribly wrong. When did it become okay to eat sizzling fajitas at the movies? What happened? When I was a kid, you ate some popcorn, and you drank a Coke, you tried to be quiet. I went to the movies the other night, there was a dessert cart coming down the aisle. There's a lady behind me getting her eyebrows waxed. There's a woman in the front row adopting a baby from South Africa. Is anybody watching the movie? Anybody? No, we're all checking in to tell you we're at the movies. We're all telling someone we're at the movies instead of being at the movies. I mean, I, I feel like I, I even, I do this myself. I live in uh, Santa Monica and the, the marathon ended there a while ago. I saw a number on the floor, I picked it up. I ran that last two blocks. It felt great, you guys. It felt great, people were high-fiving me. Posted it on Facebook, finished the marathon. Kind of true. I work on a TV show sometimes as a nurse, and let me tell you something, I don't know if anyone here is in the medical profession, but wearing those scrubs is incredibly empowering. I mean, they put those scrubs on me. I felt really good, and then they gave me a stethoscope, and I was like, I can heal people, <laughs> really. So I left work one day, I went to Cedar sinai and did an eight-hour shift. 
po posted a picture of myself on Facebook, told people I'd become a nurse. It really doesn't take much anymore in this country. No one's sticking to their assigned tasks. Everything's upside down. I saw a late night commercial that said become a nurse in six months. I did it in eight hours at Universal Studios, you guys. Come on. I know the theme today is the hunger to connection, and so I want to tell you a good story that I, I just love telling. It happened to me a while ago. I was not in a great place, and I was feeling very low. A lot of comics just love getting up here and making people laugh, but sometimes there's a terribly dark side when the show is over. And I was lying in bed, and I was feeling low, and I was thinking about this article I had read about Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys, not the pitcher for the uh, San Francisco Giants. And Brian Wilson had spent seven years in his bathrobe in his beach house with only his therapist. And it was one of those mornings where I was thinking that sounded really good. And I remembered that I had submitted my information to audition to be a mascot for the LB, uh, WNBA LA Sparks. I'm not, of course, in any way qualified to be a mascot. And I got out of bed and I got dressed and I drove down to Marina Del Rey and I auditioned to be a mascot for a professional basketball team. When I got there, there were a lot of long-legged dancers in their 20s. I'm not. I've got a kung fu panda belly. I'm in my 40s. Everything should have said, just run, run from this room. I asked the woman if the mascot costume was available and she said, why? And I said, I assume you're taping this and I'd like to at least wear the head so that this tape doesn't get anywhere out in the real world. So the first dancer danced and said he had a Miami dance crew on his resume. The second dancer said that he had been a mascot for the Harlem Globetrotters. And then it was my turn. And they put on Pump Up the Volume, a very popular song at sporting events. And I froze for about five seconds. And then because the mascot's a dog, I got on all fours and urinated on a houseplant. <laughs> I then lay on my back and asked for belly rubs and screamed Candace Parker, who's one of the star athletes on the WNBA Sparks. Obviously, dance is not traditionally a verbal art form. <laughs> the 45 seconds of my audition seemingly felt like eight or 10 minutes finally ended and the woman said, wow, uh, thank you. And I said, you're welcome. <laughs> And she kept me for a second interview, which surprised the heck out of me. And she said, I had to talk to you and ask you what made you come here today. And I said, you know, I wasn't feeling great. And I thought, if I stay here at home in my Brian Wilson bathrobe, I kind of know what the day will be like. But if I get out and connect, maybe something will change. And she said, there's no easy way to say this. You were deeply unqualified for this position. <laughs> but I'd like you to come and do corporate events for the WNBA Sparks and do comedy for us. And I said, I would love that. And so that was a moment where I connected that felt really good. So I'm just saying, if you have a morning and you want to stay in that Brian Wilson bathrobe, get out of bed, do something you're deeply unqualified to do. <laughs> and connect because you really never know what'll happen if you just take that ship and change it one degree in another direction and try. All right, thanks a lot.